friends, you're here with me, Jen the Taxidermy Witch, and we're going to sit down and talk about something really amazing, um, Bach flower remedies. So sit down, grab a cup of tea or some elixir water, and we can talk about Bach flowers and witchcraft, okay? Okay, so I found it in two places, and I actually found it on accident, and I love when I find things on accident. For instance, we were going through chicory, and we did that whole video on chicory root and how we can use it in witchcraft, herbalism, ancestor offerings, etc. That's the video right before this. And when I was trying to find its medicinal benefits, because there are many, I didn't talk about those on my channel. There are plenty of YouTube videos on medicinal benefits of chicory, so I suggest you look at that, especially if you are thinking about changing your coffee over to that. However, chicory flower is one of the Bach flowers, and that's where it appeared in this book. So I thought, what a great way to share that homeopathic remedy that has worked so many times for me and could work so well for you. Bach flowers are amazing for any kind of, as we'll read through this book, emotional anxiety, self-afflictions. It's like um, flower essences that help your mental challenges. Not like you're mentally challenged, but like you're me everybody has mental challenges in one way or another. And as soon as we accept that and know that it's a part of who we are, grow from it and move on, that's great. But the Bach flowers can help you get through the physical pain of those emotions and these traits. And so we'll read. I'm going to reread the whole section on Bach flower remedies in case you didn't see my chicory video. Um, so if this is repetitive, in repetitive information for you, I apologize. Um, <clears throat> but yes, Bach flower remedies. Bach is spelled B-A-C-H. Um, the Bach flower remedy represents an approach to herbalism. Excuse me, we're reading from this book by David Hoffman. I've had this book since I was 17 years old, and I've always felt like it was a magical tool for me, even though I wasn't practicing witchcraft when I was 17. Herbalism has always been a big part of my life because I grew up on a farm, and I've always, always grown plants. In the one or two years that I lived where I couldn't grow plants, I, I didn't feel right, and so that's a part of me. And you can make it a part of yourself, and I think that can really improve your happiness and your closeness with the earth and all of those things. So, Bach flower remedies. The Bach flower remedy represents an approach to herbalism that is um, alchemal <laughs> amalgam of the spiritual essence of the flower in cooperation with the emotional, mental need of the person. Okay, They are not usually directed for physical illness, but for the individual's worry, um, ap apprehension, hopelessness, fear, irritability, etc. The state of someone's psychic being has a major bearing on the causation, development, and cure of any physical illness. The remedies appear to work with the life force, allowing it to flow freely through and around the block, so speed healing and a return so speed to speed healing and return to a wholeness. Thirty eight remedies were developed in the late uh, by the late Dr. Edward Bach, and I believe when we read in this book it was the mid thirties when Edward figured this out. Um, by the late Edward Bach, so he's now passed. The story of how he found them is wonderful indeed, and worth reading about. <clears throat> Look into that, you know, how Bach remedies appeared. Uh, I need to turn on my fan because this velvet dress is quite, quite hot. Thank you. And I like to light a candle for people if I'm feeling it, and I feel that right now it would be cool to light a candle for Dr. Bach. 
and thank him because his Bach remedies helped me so much when I was pregnant and experiencing things that I couldn't explain and I wasn't taking any kind of medicine, even Tylenol when I was pregnant. I wasn't drinking coffee. I was, you know, very anal about what I did during my pregnancy because I wanted a complete natural birth, which I was able to accomplish. Yay! Um, however, this is something that is safe at all terms of life. Um, however, you should always check with your doctor because I am not a doctor. Get a naturopath when you're pregnant as well as your MD. That's my best suggestion to you. You're going to have a, you know, an idea from the herbalistic view and then from the safest view of our Western world. Uh, okay, so Dr. Bach. Sorry we got it on a tangent there, guys. Thirty-eight remedies were developed by the late Edward, Dr. Edward Bach. The story of how he found them is quite wonderful indeed and worth reading about. The contact address for any information about these remedies is, it's in England, if you want the address let me know and I will type it to you in a comment. Um, he found 38 flowers to cover the negative states of the mind from which we so often suffer. I mean, isn't that rad? He found 38 flowers to match up and help with the negative aspects of the mind. I feel like he had access to the Akashic Records, and I know, Maddie, you might have been thinking that too. I just had like a really interesting connection with you there. But the Akashic Records and Edgar Casey, if you don't know about that, I've made a video on it. Um, it's really quite something though. <clears throat> Um, I don't like to blow out my candles. I like to actually put them out either with a snuffer or with tweezers. That's what I was doing there. Um, he found 38 flowers to cover the negative states of the mind, <coughs> which we so often suffer, categorizing them under seven major headings with further subdivisions. These headings are ha apprehension, indecision, loneliness, insufficient interest in circumstances, oversensitivity, despondency and despair, and over care for others, which I feel that term means being an empath. Which I am and I, I hope and I feel that that would work with that. Um, these flower remedies are ideal for self-use and again much more information and supplies are obtainable from the center. <clears throat> they are inherently benign in action and have no unpleasant reactions and can be used by anyone. I'm going to repeat that. I'm not a doctor. They are inherently benign in action and have no unpleasant reactions and can be used by anyone. That's what my naturopath told me. She's like, fall upon these Bach flower remedies during your pregnancy. Uh, and and she, she promised me that it would you know, I would only thrive from it and be more ready for the end of my pregnancy. And I was, and it really helped me. So I have to say that. I don't have a little one because I'm not using them currently. They're quite expensive these days. We will do a video on how to make your own Bach flower essences. I will pick a flower from one of these that Alex and I will grow here at Jackshai Farms and we will make our own essence together this summer. That's a fun promise. I like that. Um, so let's see here, can be used by anyone. The dose is simply a few drops of the special extracts in water. So if you guys have not seen a tincture bottle, whoop, they look like this. And a Bach flower tincture bottle is actually even smaller than this one. This is just a valerian tincture I have for sleep and I actually, <laughs> when I used to start using these when I was like 20 years old, uh, they were like 10 bucks a piece. Now they're $27 a piece and it is one ounce of liquid. I just made a batch of this which cost me about $40 and uh, for the herbs, the alcohol, the whole preparation, the whole everything and um, it's worth about $1,200 if you break it down into this. Alright, so anyway, Bach flower essences come in little jars like this but they're smaller. They're like this small. And they have a little Doppler and then they have a glass uh, 
they have a glass dropper and then a glass bottle. Great to reuse for when you're doing your own tinctures, guys. Just wash off the labels and redo your own tincture. But that's how they'll come. And then you can drop a few of those flower essence drops right into water, your tea, what have you. But water really is the best base because it's going to go into your body just the diluted substance. So I really feel that's the best base. However, if you need to sneak it into your child's juice, it doesn't taste bad. It really doesn't. But you just drop it under the tongue, in my best opinion there. It's absorbed best in the body under the tongue. And letting it set before you swallow. Um, I shall quote from a brief guide to remedies produced by the center to give a taste of the uses of the remedies. So the first flower is argimony, A-R-G-I-M-O-N-Y. For those who suffer from inner torture, which they try to hide behind a facade of cheerfulness. Now, I've experienced that in my life and that's a painful thing to do. And it looks great on the outside, but it's painful on the inside. So that's amazing. That little tiny, not even a paragraph, just like touched me, you know? Uh, Aspen, for apprehension and foreboding, fears of the unknown origin. Beech, B-E-E-C-H, for those who are arrogant, critical, and intolerant of others. Now I have to pause and say something. When I first was told how to use Bach flower remedies, they said, don't look at the chart. I want you to pick what one you're drawn to. My naturopath had them in her office and she goes, don't look at the chart. We're not doing that. Pick what one you're drawn to. And the first one I was drawn to was beach. And that is a perfect way to explain me in my 20s. I was an angry person. I didn't grow up with money. I worked hard all my life and I didn't get much in return. And I gave the evil eye out to everybody. I was jealous of everybody. I'm sure my aura was bright freaking green with envy. Um, and this is, describes my personality, arrogant, critical, and intolerant of others. That remedy did help me get out of that stage in my life, and I used it for two years and fell in love with it. Um, yeah, and if you've ever seen Rescue Remedy, I think, no, yeah, Rescue Remedy, that's Bach flower essence. They have them in tablets and in a dropper. Rescue Remedy is Bach flower, so if you use that, you know. That reduces your stress and anxiety immediately, but it is $40, you know, Whew, a lot less than prescription medication paying out of pocket. Okay. So the next herb uh, or flower is centauri, C-E-N-T-A-U-R-Y, weakness of will in those who let themselves be imposed upon and become subservient, who have difficulty in saying no. I know quite a few of those people in my life, and uh, I feel poor for you if you have a hard time saying no, but I've been there. You know, I've been that person that goes, okay, whatever you want, and it's hard. You never get what you want in life. Um, the next flower is Serato, C-E-R-A-T-O. Those who doubt their own judgment, and uh, see, if you doubt your own judgment in witchcraft, this could really help you. Those who doubt their own judgment and overly seek the advice of others, often influenced and misguided. So when I, paste, when I post this onto um, Pagans and Witches Amino app and you guys see it, and I'm so happy for this app because you guys, I made friends from there and we've come to YouTube and we've joined together and YouTubers have come to the app and that's a beautiful thing. We're joining this family in a great way. But a lot of you have so many questions, and that's great as well. Ask your questions, but remember that you want to enhance your own intuition, and you also want to um, feel more confident within yourself, then this Serato is a really great thing. You know, if you doubt your own judgment, and that's something you have to build before you get confident and do workings, is no that when you talk to your spirit guides and you ask them for your help and you call upon them, that they are helping you. Be confident with that. I feel that Serato could help you. Um, cherry Plum. For a fear of mental collapse, 
So if you think that you're going to have a breakdown, uh, desperation or loss of control or vicious rages, the cherry plum flower essence is for you. Next is chestnut bud. If you have a refusal to learn by experience and continually repeat the same mistakes. Now in the chicory video, we talked about chicory, but it is next on the list. Yay for chicory. Uh, over now this is not chicory root this is chicory flower and when we looked in scott cunningham's encyclopedia of magical herbs i showed you in that picture it's just a black and white drawing um but it is of the chicory bush not the root um so yeah the chicory flower is for over possessive and demanding attention if you are over possessive and demanding attention if you have selfishness for those who like others to con form to their standards will often make martyrs of themselves. If any of those things apply to you, then chicory flower is going to be your Bach essence. But I really do think that it is interesting to go to the store, close your eyes, and, and just pick which one. And use that as well as these, but do the one you pick because Sometimes we're not able to admit to ourselves, you know, that I can admit it, you know, 15 years later that I was this person, but at the time I would not have called myself arrogant, critical of others, or intolerant of others, but deep inside I knew that I was, you know. Um, <clears throat> next is clematis. Indifferent, inattentive, dreamy, and absent-minded. Mental escape from reality. Uh, next is crab apple. A cleanser for those who feel unclean or ashamed of ailments. For self-disgust and the house proud. Elm. Temporarily overcome by responsibility or inequity. Inadequacy. Excuse me. Inadequacy. Uh, although normally very capable. Gentian, G-E-N-T-I-A-N, despondent, easily discouraged, and dejected. Gorse, G-O-R-S-E, extreme hopelessness. Heather, for people who are obsessed with their own troubles and experiences, poor listeners. Holly, for those who are jealous, envious, revengeful, and suspicious. For those who hate. For those of you who hate, and I try and get rid of this thought all the time when it happens to me. It used to happen a lot as a younger person, but now as soon as it comes into my head, I just try and flood my head with better things. Because there's no way to like really change yourself. You can just analyze and become better about it. But man, that, that, that's, a, that's a hard one. Hey, you know, as much as you can, don't keep that emotion in your head. Don't dwell on it. Unless you really want to do some powerful, powerful hexing magic in which I can surely do a video on. But I've talked about it a lot in my videos on how you can use hate and anger um, in your workings. And the energy that comes from it can absolutely be utilized, but when you tap into it, it's so freaking exhausting and it can really take a toll on you. So there's that. Um, honeysuckle. For those with nostalgia who constantly dwell in the past. Also homesickness. Homesickness is one of the saddest experiences, emotional experiences I've ever had. It's happened to me like once every 10 years through my life to where I've literally felt so sick I couldn't move and um, it's it's one of the worst feelings so honeysuckle yes hornbeam procrastination Monday morning feeling it's Monday look how happy I am it's not morning anymore we've just changed in the afternoon but it is Monday um okay so now we are on to impatience, I-M-P-A-T-I-E-N-S, impatience and irritability. Lark, 
Lark is another one that I chose with my eyes closed and I think this time when I chose it I was like mid 20s to late 20s when I got off the beach and onto something else. It was the Lark. Now let's read what it was. Despondency due to lack of self-confidence. Absolutely. I was losing my self-confidence in my 20s because of living a crazy life and being sad about it the next morning and, you know, drinking too much or whatever. And these are things that you learn as you go through life, but man, it's not a good feeling and it's not the nicest. So despondency to the lack of self-confidence and expectation of failure. So they fail to make an attempt. Totally. I, my whole life have struggled with, I can't do that. So I won't even try until I did massage school. And I honestly didn't think I could do it going in, but my sister-in-law, Tanya, if you ever see this, like, the person I am today, where I'm at today, even making this channel wouldn't have happened without her, because she was the t one who told me, you can go to college, you can do anything you put your mind to, you can get a 4.0. The next day, I signed up for massage school, and I was, changed my life. One person's words can change your whole life, and that moment of my life brought me to where I'm sitting now, brought me to my husband, brought me to so many beautiful things, and the spot I was in then was horrible. So I just want to say that about myself. Um, they feel inferior, although they have the ability. Absolutely, I had the ability. You guys saw the video I did on my accomplishment tassels. I got a 4.0, I got perfect attendance, and I became the ambassador of the school. Like, that experience changed my being, changed my person, changed my soul and my life. It made me so happy and confident. Um, all right. Mimulus. M-I-M-U-L-U-S. Where are we at time-wise? Oh, we're creeping. Whew. Are we going to get through it? Yeah, we'll get through it. Okay. Mimus. Fear of known things, shyness, and timidity. Timid. T if you're timid. How do you say it with an I-T-Y at the end? Timidity? What? Timidity. Timidity. Mm-hmm. That's it. <laughs> Mustard. Deep gloom that descends for no known reason, but which can lift as suddenly. Melancholy. Oak. Determination. Struggles on in illness and against adversity despite setbacks. A poddler. I don't know what a poddler is. If you guys do, let me know in the comments, please. Olive. Exhaustion drained of energy. Everything is an effort. So if you have like, what do they call it? Um, chronic fatigue, that type of feeling. Olive. Pine. Feelings of guilt. They blame themselves for mistakes of others and feel unworthy. If I have not said this already in this video, I am not a doctor. And before you use any of these things, you need to consult with your doctor and naturopath. I'm just reading from David Hoffman's book, who I feel is brilliant. Uh, red chestnut, excessive fear and over caring for others held dear. Again, if you're an empath, red chestnut, or at least if you're the type of empath I am. Uh, rock rose, Terror, extreme fear, or panic. Rock water. For those who are hard on themselves, rigid-minded, and self-denying. Uh, next, I'm going to have to spell it. S-C-L-E-R-A-N-T-H-U-S. Scleranthius? Uncertainly, indecision, and... Vaciliation? Star of Bethlehem. For all the effects of bad news... Or fright following an accident. Sweet chestnut. Anguish of those who have reached the limits of endurance and absolute dejection. Vervain, which we all have in our witch cabinet, but again, now we're talking about the flower. Um, over enthusiasm, over effort, and straining fanatical. Vine. Dominating, inflexible, ambitious, and autocratic, arrogance and pride. Walnut, a protection remedy of powerful influences and helps adjustment to any transition or change. Example, menopause or divorce. Um, 
water violet. <laughs> Proud, preserved, superior, uh, white chestnut. Persistent, unwanted thoughts, preoccupation with worry or event, mental arguments. Wild oat. Health determines one's intended path in life. Wild rose. Resonation, apathy, for drifters who accept their lot, making little effort for improvement. Willow. Hmm? Hi, Willow, if you're watching. One of my favorite friends on Pagans and Witches and Mina Lap. <laughs> and her daughter, who's so pretty and beautiful. She's a little tiny witch. Uh, resentment and bitterness with a... <laughs> poor me attitude. Um, rescue remedy, which I spoke about before, uh, is to treat the effect that a sufferer may experience through serious news, bereavement, terror, severe mental trauma, that's what I used it for, um, after like an episode of um, abuse. A feeling of desperation for a numbed, bemused state of mind. Every home should have a dropper bottle of it. I completely agree with that. If anyone goes into any kind of panic, Rescue Remedy is exactly what it's called. It will rescue your situation. Man, every single one of my family members has a claim to that, and only half of them are into naturopathics. Uh, and it's worth traveling with it. Yes, these pastels that they make for you to just pop in your mouth. Oh boy, and again, they are expensive, but you got to think about it. You're taking the flower that could have produced the fruit and you're squeezing a tiny drop of oil from it. So you could have gotten $3 for the orange or the fruit or whatever, but instead you took the flower. So it is going to be quite pricey, but it does work. It works fast and there are no hangover repercussions or medicinals that are sitting floating in your bloodstream, making your body more toxic and unattuned with the earth. Um, these are my opinions. And I hope that you respect them. And if you don't, then please tell me in the comments how you feel, because I do want to know. Um, so yes, like travel with it if you can. Have a dropper bottle of it. Um, it is taken orally at a dose of about four drops in water. You really don't need a lot. So that dropper that you buy that's $40 these days or whatever, it's going to go a long way. Um, Bach Flower Remedies Rescue Remedy. Okay? It's a big like orange box or container or label or whatever. Okay, next I did find a bit of it in this book, but I don't have a lot of time to talk left in my video. I try to keep them to not turn into two videos. Um, so I am reading out of The Plant Spirit Familiar by Christopher Penn Kazak, and he brings up Bach flowers a couple of times in his book. Um, for one, he tells us a little bit more than we learned in here. There actually is in this book a whole chapter on flower essences, which if I ran and had a lot of time left, I was going to read. Um, however, in this book, it does tell all about it. And then if you would like to know more, let me know. Flower essences historically come from the tradition of homeopathy. While inspired material will cite their own origin in the mythic lands of Atlantis and Lumeria, where I'm from, Lumeria, are historic, because I'm RH negative, uh, our historic knowledge of flower essences begin with the English homeopath Dr. Edward Bach in 1943. Okay, that's when it was, 1943, which is so wild. I think it's so cool that such a peaceful thing was happening for the future world while such a gross, disgusting, destructive thing was happening as well, which was World War II, which horrible but I think it's cool to know that something beautiful was going on during that time. Just wanted to say that. Every time a year that pops up, you know, of World War II, I always think, man, that was such a sucky time. And that's what I just thought just there. Um, so his research led him to experiment with the morning dew of flowers and his own obvious sensitivity led him to discover that flowers helped heal specific mental, emotional, spiritual conditions. He did not substitute 
He did not substitute to the germ theory of illness, but believed illness was a result of disharmony from a conflict between his soul and personality, of which necessity uh, reacts in the form of physical disorders. You guys, this whole statement right here rings so true to my beliefs. I'm going to say it again. The conflict between soul and personality which of necessity reacts in the form of physical disorders. And that's from Heal Thyself by Edward Bach, a book that he wrote that I should be getting, I want to get. It's on my wish list for sure now. And if you, if you get it or if you have it, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. He designed a system of flower remedies that have become a staple of modern alternative healing. They are used to treat issues such as depression, anxiety, stress, and insomnia. Through a doctor and through a doctor, a man of science, Dr. Bach was not supported by the scientific and medical establishment of his time. Of course not, not in 1943. And to this day was not received wide recognition in mainstream arenas. It can be argued that his research of the essences took him well into esoteric areas. Awesome! That's the kind of medicine I want to take, you guys. And I know it's the kind of medicine you'll be into as well. Really, esoteric medicine? Alchemy and medicine? Yes, please. Um, ah, now I lost my place. Uh, such as the use of astrology with essences. So he even brought astrology into the research of this designing these essences. As he aligned each zodiac sign with the essence of his system of the 12 healers. We got to get this book, you guys. One of us has got to get this book or you have to send it to me so I can read it to you. But oh my goodness, what's Heal Thyself by Edward Bach. We've got to get it. Um, the vernacular of flower essence therapy has absorbed many new age terms drawn in by the theo sophistical movement seeking to bring Eastern spiritual concept concepts into the West, particularly due to the influence of the Finehorn community in Scotland. Willow, do you know what that is? It's common to see terms like channeling, ascending, mastering, seven rays, and divas, including <clears throat> included along with homeopathic terminology. Um, yeah, and then it just kind of goes on to talk more about flower instances, but not necessarily um, Dr. Buck. Um, and he's mentioned a few times in this book, but it all has the same roundabout. So thank you guys for, for joining me, Jen the Taxidermy Witch, while we talked about Bach flower essences. And I will talk to you guys soon. Have a beautiful day.